How's it going? I almost forgot to ask. All right. So uh, today we're here with three neutrons. Uh, finally got the case to put them together. And um, I'll make a strong case for it. Anyway, um, finally got the case to put them together. And we're going to play around with um, using them as one super neutron, one big neutron. Not uh, poly mode, where we can play uh, three note chords. I have other polyphonic synths, uh, but this, you know, three neutrons is quite a modular system, and um, we're going to use it as one today. Patching them all together, you can hear I did quite a complex patch, uh, and let me tell you a little bit about some of the things that can go into this particular patch I've got going on, but I'll give you some other patch ideas and tell you a little bit about what I think is cool of, of about three neutrons strung together. Well, first of all, uh, here's what you get when you've got three neutrons. It's six envelopes, six oscillators, three filters, and a whole lot of ways to put that together. The only thing really that makes the neutron to be a little bit of a diminutive synth, a little bit of a not as big as what some other synths could be, is that it's two oscillators. I know there's plenty of two oscillator synths out there, but it's not a three oscillator synth like a Model D or uh, 2600, but putting them together, six oscillators is quite a sound. You can detune them all, make a giant in unison lead. Uh, one of the things, though, that it has, which is less than a lot of synths, especially something you'd want on a modular, is only one LFO. But three LFOs, you can do some crazy stuff. In this case, I've got two separate LFOs are modulating the wave shape of the two oscillators of the first neutron independently. Watch this. I'll change the rate of... The left one, you can see uh, it's going slower. I have still have the right one really fast. And I'll make that one slower too. I'll try and get them somewhat in sync with each other, which is almost impossible. But that's part of the beauty of it is that they start to sync up and then they kind of go off from each other. Okay. <laughs> Let me turn off the oscillators that I have stacked with it from the other neutrons so you can hear that wave shaping uh, stuff on its own. Let's put a little bit slower. Okay, so um, in this patch, but really you pretty much have to do it in any patch that you have three neutrons or multiple neutrons together, is you have to run them through an attenuator on each one so that you can set the volume of the, of the units. Because if you allow uh, even two units to go through there at full blast, like you, let's say you just patch the oscillator mix out of one unit and put it to the, the audio in of the other unit, you're going to clip the input to the filter of the unit that is plugged into. Okay, so I have each neutron going into its own attenuator so that it's like a volume control. Okay, so here's neutron one, which is doing the wave shaping stuff. I have a layer right now of another uh, square wave, an octave below. I'll put that in. And I have another layer of a square, oc an octave below that.
And in this particular patch, I have attenuator two on each unit uh, doing a pitch envelope controlled by this envelope down here. So this envelope is going to the pitch of all three units, but with a settable amount. Here's how you get the oscillators uh, of multiple neutron units to all go into one unit so that you can use the filter of one unit and uh, the amp envelope and the filter envelope of the one unit to make a bigger neutron. Okay, so uh, what you would do is you would take the, um, the oscillator mix, okay, and you would go into the VCF in, but if you do that, you'll overload it because the VCF in is meant to take uh, only two oscillators of the neutron, it will overload. So we're going to take the oscillator mix out to the attenuator in so we can control its volume. Okay, and then we're going to actually do the same thing on neutron one, which is the destination unit, because we need to use attenuator one on it to lower its volume. So we're going to do the same thing here. Oscillator mix into attenuator one in. We're going to go attenuator one on both units into the sum in. Okay, we'll do it here. Sum one A and then sum one B. We're going to go after that, we're going to go sum out to VCF in. And that's going to break the normal connection inside and allow um, both units to go to their individual attenuators through the sum, letting us have two inputs into the VCF instead of just one. And we have ind individual volume control using those attenuators. You probably want to start with one oscillator, uh, tune that, and then tune everything else against that. So we'll turn attenuator one down on the second unit and put our oscillator mix over to the left. We get just oscillator one. We'll look at our tuner. We'll put everything in perfect tune at first, and then we'll detune it afterward. Okay, now let's bring in the second neutron. These things hold our tuning really pretty well. It's still pretty in tune from last time I did it. We'll do oscillator one on the second neutron first. And now we'll bring in oscillator two on the second neutron, which is technically four now. They're a lower octave. You can hear how huge this is starting to sound. All right. Now, how do we get in a third neutron? The sums on these units, which is what I use to get two neutrons, uh, the second neutron and the first neutron, into the VCF in of the of the first neutron, uh, the sum only has two inputs, not three. We need a third sum input. Okay, it doesn't happen naturally. So what we got to do is use the sum on another input. To, I mean, on another neutron to create it. Okay, so we're going to take this neutron. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take its oscillator mix. We're going to go to attenuator one. Okay, and we're going to go out of attenuator one into um, one of these other sums, okay? Let's say the sum on itself. Well, we'll, we'll do the sum up here, okay? Sum one, not sum one in on the second unit. Okay, now we have to come out of that sum to somewhere. So what we're gonna do is use, we're gonna remove one of the sums on the first unit, okay? 
And instead of taking this attenuator one to the sum on the first unit, we'll just go into the second unit. Okay. And because I have the neutron going into its, its attenuator going into its own sum, we have an open hole. We're basically ganging the sums together. Okay, so we're going to take this sum and we're going to go, uh, we're going to, well, I want to go in the direction of the cable. So that's something that can help you keep, keep track of what you're doing is always do patching in the direction it's going. So start with the source, then go to the destination. So we're going to go out of this sum, because remember we have neutron 2 going to its attenuator and then half of the sum. And then neutron three going to its attenuator, the oscillator is going to its attenuator, and the other half of the sum. And that sum out going into this sum, the other one going into this sum of the first unit is the attenuator of the first unit. So basically, by using two sums, we are making a sum that has three inputs rather than one that has uh, just two. And now I can get the third neutron on, going on in there. I hope I did it right. Let's see. You'll know if I turn this up and I hear it. Yes, I did. So now you have a neat volume control of each unit. So unit one, unit two. Unit three. I'll go through the one filter. Let's do something else cool. Let's take it one extra step. Let's use two filters in series. I mean, I know you have a bandpass filter you can use on the one. We're, right now we're using low pass. But what if we want to have our own completely settable resonant low pass and high pass at the same time? Kind of like a Korg MS20. Well, I would say a lot like a Korg MS20. Let's do that. So uh, we have normally the VCF in, the, in a neutron is coupled to the VCA, which is the amplifier. So basically the output of the filter goes to the amplifier circuit of the neutron. And we're going to, instead of that, we're going to take the VCF out of one, which is the filter out of one, the low pass in this case, and we're going to run it into the VCF in of a whole other unit, unit two. So we're going to go VCF out to VCF in on this second unit. And then we're going to go, I don't need some long cable. We're going to go VCF out of the second unit, which is. right there and we're going to go into uh the back into the the first unit we're going to go to the vca in which is right there okay and so what we're doing here is we're having all three units oscillators run into the vcf of this unit which would normally go to the vca amplifier of this unit and then out of the synth but before that, we're taking a trip out from the VCF out to the VCF in of the second unit, and then out of that VCF, right, yeah. Oh, I missed it. Okay, that VCF out into the VCA in of the first unit, and then we're going to have two filters. So there's our low pass. We'll set this one to high pass. Here, that's very different than what uh, using just the band pass on a neutron would be. It's its own, uh, its own separate cutoffs that are, in this case, narrower between the two. Let's make them resonant. Why not? Okay. 
And this second VCF, the high pass, is being controlled by this neutron's own env VCF envelope. Okay, we're going to do the envelope depth here. Okay, and one trick that is done on the MS-20 a lot is to use resonance to emphasize the bottom end of the tone, okay, uh, uh, for the high-pass filter. Normally, you can only do something like that on the top. But here we can do it on the bottom too, watch this. See, we can move that that resonance bubble or emphasis up and down into the, the fundamental tone. And you gotta watch for clipping there. Okay, so let's change some waveforms so we can hear a six oscillator patch. Um, just sound a little different. Again, all envelope control uh, for the, the uh, filter here is its filter envelope. And all envelope for the filter control here is this envelope. We don't have to patch that because that's um, a normal connection that exists until you break it here on the patch bay. And we don't need to break it. <laughs> Okay, so let's set up that cool trick that I did where I was able to get um, these oscillators changing shape based on two independent LFOs, okay? And um, I'm going to use the LFOs on these two units and not the LFO on the main unit here. And the reason for that is I want to be able to still have this LFO to modulate, let's say, the filter or the volume, okay? I'm going to have it be able to modulate the filter. Uh, first, before I even set up the wave shaping stuff. So let's take the LFO out on, um, I got the wrong glasses on. No wonder I can't see. Well, that's so much better. Okay, so we're going to take, um, we don't need to uh, uh, do anything for this LFO to affect the filter. That's one of those normal connections. <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to make these two LFOs be able to change the shape of the two oscillators on this unit independently. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, take this LFO out right here. So we're going to go um, LFO out of this second unit to the shape one, which is oscillator one shape. And you can see when I have its rate change. 
the shape moves around. Okay, so we have to do the same thing on the second unit to shape two. Okay, so we're going to go LFO on this unit, and we're going to go to shape two of the first unit. And now you can see they're both moving according to these individual LFOs. This is the speed and shape of this one, and this is the speed and shape of that one. Okay, uh, and they'll be moving independently. You can try and sync them up. It'll never really happen. You'll kind of get it for a split second. And then inevitably they'll go off from each other and then they'll kind of come back to uh, going together again for a brief time before they go off again. You can try and match those speeds. It's still never really going to get there. Sometimes you kind of go real fast and then there you go. All right, but well, let's hear that for a second. And we're going to hear it only on the one unit for now. Here fast. And we'll hear it slow. Slow, you get this nice morphing. Okay. Um, but what if you didn't want the two? moving out of sync with each other or at separate times or speeds or whatever and you just want one lfo to control both okay well what we'll do is we'll take this lfo out of shape and this lfo out of shape and we will use lfo on just this unit to go to both and we'll do that using a mult one thing goes in multiple of that thing come out okay um so we're going to go LFO out of this unit into the mult of this unit in. We're going to go mult of this unit out. There's two mult outputs into shape one. And we're going to go mult of this unit into shape two. And now they're moving completely in sync based on this one. Which will sound cool too. You can hear that they don't sound completely smooth as they shift from one to the other. They're a little grainy when they go fast. When it's slow, it's not as grainy. have a slower amplitude envelope there. How did I do that trick where I had um, uh, attenuator two being the pitch envelope uh, of this unit controlling all three? It's with the mult. So we have to not do this mult to LFO thing. Okay, so we'll take that out. Okay, and we'll go back to individual control. Of the two oscillators so i'll go lfo to shape one and two or you know what let's not even do that shape thing right now okay but you get the point i'd have to go back to using them individually instead uh we're going to use this envelope to control the um, pitch of all three units and individually or not at all okay and we're going to do that using the attenuator two and the mult 
to get this envelope into all three units. Okay, so we're going to go. I need some of my beer for this. Okay, so to get envelope two to control the oscillator pitch of the individual units, we're going to have to use the mult. Okay, uh, and we also want to be able to have them controlled individually how much pitch envelope is controlling the pitch of individual neutrons. So we're going to have to use attenuator two. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to go into the mult attenuator two on each unit. So first, we're going to go into the malt from envelope two. Okay, so we're going to go envelope two into the malt in. Then we're going to go out of the malt in, one of the two outs of the malt in, okay, to attenuator, I mean, uh, to attenuator two. And then we're going to go out of attenuator two into oscillator one and two. Okay, let's test this by hearing just the unit we're using right now. Okay. And by using that malt, we can do the same thing on the next unit. So we're going to go the other half of that malt into the next malt because we need to be able to get to this unit. Otherwise, we could go directly into the attenuator. But we're gonna to go to the next malt here. We're gonna go one half of that malt out to attenuator two in. We're gonna go out of that attenuator two into oscillator one and two on this unit. And we're going to test that. So let's turn the volume down of these oscillators real quick. Turn this one up. You can see it's already happening. Now we can use both the units and have independent control of how much this envelope is modulating oscillator one and two pitch of each unit. Okay? So it's doing it only a little bit on this unit doing it a lot on this unit or a lot uh, on this one and less here all from one control or not at all here but we have the ability to okay so now the last unit we're going to go and take the other half of this malt into attenuator two on this unit and go attenuator two of that unit out into oscillator one and two of this unit. Okay, and now we have the same thing here. So we'll test it by turning these down. And as soon as I bring this up, attenuator two, now it's being controlled from this envelope. Let's have a few oscillate, a few units going. We have multiple, I mean, up to six oscillators. Like to have just a tiny little bit of a, a pitch uh, bump in the very beginning. A real short decay. Remember, we got two filters happening now, too. 
Okay, now that is with this envelope controlling oscillator one and two of each unit. But sometimes you only want to control oscillator two of each unit. And the reason for that is cool oscillator sync sounds. Let's try that. Let's go instead of oscillator one and two of each unit, oscillator two only of each unit. And this should be fun. Or we'll hear nothing at all. Let's see. Let's put them in sync. Well, let's test it first. So we're going to turn down the attenuators except the first unit. You can hear oscillator 2 is doing it. And oscillator 1 is not. Okay. And I know that's going to happen on each unit, so let's just do that same thing here. Turn each unit up. And we're going to turn oscillator sync on, on each unit. Okay, let's put these things all to the same octave. And let's stop hearing oscillator one in the mix to hear only the synced oscillator do the ripping through the harmonics thing. Let's hear it with let's hear it with a little portamento, uh, just because. And we have individual portamento times per unit, which is really going to sound crazy because they're going to not all arrive at the same time. slow. I'll do slow. 